Are you following a good strength training muscle building program and want to know how to incorporate cardio to maximize your results? Watch this. Our next caller is Rachel from Texas. What's up, Rachel? How can we help you? Hi, how are y'all today? Good. Um, I just had a question over training and I'm kind of new to doing one of y'all's programs. So I started in November um, doing MAPS HIT and I ran that through November and December and took a break um, during the holidays. And then I started up anabolic in January. Uh, and I'm currently doing it with friends prior to that the friends that I'm doing with, um, we were online doing another platform and we were probably hands down over training. Um, at least personally I was, but some of the things that we did on that online platform, like hit or cardio or, um, burpees, you know, a lot more cardio intensive training, um, I miss, and I'm wondering how I can incorporate it, even if it's one day a week, or how I can incorporate it with my current program. Yeah, did you? Are you wanting just to do it because you like doing burpees, or are you looking for the best results? Both. So I know that's hard, but I truly <laughs> enjoy doing. I know that sounds dumb, but I truly enjoy doing that form of training. So I don't. I don't want to go back to my old ways. So okay. that's what I'm for sure do not want to do. Well, it's, it's not dumb, by the way. Yeah, it's a lot yeah, of people. No, a lot no, of people it's gravitate. Very common. No, if you like it, then you can throw it in on some of your off days. It's not a big deal. Just don't overdo it and listen to your body. But if it's something you enjoy, and this is what we've always said this, look, all activity, so long as it's done appropriately, and what we mean by that is you can do any activity wrong. You can you can use it in a way to hurt yourself or overtrain, no matter what that activity is. But so long as it's appropriate and you're you're recovering and you're not overdoing it, not hurting yourself, if you enjoy it and you actually get value out of it, just even if it's just quality of life, do it. I don't care what it is. Go for it. So if you enjoy it, do it on your off days. Now, I'll add this. You're doing MAPS Anabolic, but you like some of that other stuff. MAPS performance would be amazing. Mm -hmm. That program's got some unconventional exercises. Phase one is going to be similar to MAPS Anabolic, but you start moving to phase two, three, and then four. Mm -hmm. Three especially. You're, yes. Yeah, you're doing like you're doing some of that stuff that you're talking about. You're just doing it in constructive, effective ways. So if you enjoy or appreciate that athletic aspect of it, the heart pumping, the cardio aspect, the conditioning, MAPS performance would be a program I think that you would enjoy. I do want to caution you though, okay? It's just and that's just because at least eight out of ten of my clients that would say this because it's actually a lot more common than you think. We're were addicted to the feeling they got after that way of training more than anything else because you get this spike in cortisol and it feels amazing. It's like taking a shot of, of, of espresso or a double shot of it, right? And you get this energy rush from it and you're all sweaty and you feel accomplished. And so, but the, the truth is most times it's not what's best for my client for their, for the most results. So I just want to caution you that like I'm all for client. If I have a client that says, Adam, I love to go, you know, for a five mile run at least two or three times a week. I, it's like meditating for me and I enjoy it. It feels good. I could, I'll do it for the rest of my life. Go for it. I'm not going to tell mm -hmm. them not to do that. Even if it's not what's best for their goals, I'm going to allow them to do it because I, I'm all for that. But I just want to caution you on being able to really understand what it is about burpees because there's not a lot of people that really like doing burpees. I feel like you're lying. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, what well, I love them. In fact, like last March, the ladies that I currently am doing anabolic with, we did a challenge of how many burpees we can do in March. And we everyone did 2,000 to 3,000 burpees in March. Oh, so wow. like, I, I truly enjoyed them. Now, that was a bit overkill and it took a over my life. So it's not something I want to repeat, but I just want to throw them in every once in a while a, if there, necessary. So, so I, I hear your words that are coming out of your mouth, but I have a different, I, I feel like they're not, you're not a hundred percent honest either with us or with yourself. You loved it so much, but I think I overdid it and I don't want to do it again. Doesn't sound like they, they don't, they don't match. And so it, now I don't know, Rachel, but you sound a lot like a lot of people that I've trained who say this to themselves, but don't really mean it. Really what they're doing is they're trying to bolster or strengthen their a little bit of addiction to exercise. I get it. I'm the same way. So, and I'm not, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to defend yourself because uh, I'm sure I'm probably right. making you feel like you have to. I'm no, just I'm saying that's good. what it sounds like to me, or at least it's what it feels like. Well, listen, I taught, I, if, I don't know how much you know my history or how long you've been listening to the show, but you know, I got the opportunity to be a coach 
not that long ago, it was less than 10 years ago, um, at Orange Theory, where you have this circuit-based training. I'm not sure how familiar you are with it or not. I'm, I'm, I know Orange Theory. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, spent many, many hours uh, talking to guys and girls after classes that love to train this way. And uh, almost all of them, you know, what, what we call cortisol junkies. They, It's not so much the, the class, it's the feeling of that they get after it's the, I accomplished that I'm sweating like crazy. And that was hard as shit. And I, and I persevered and I made it through it and they felt so great. And they would tell me that, Oh, Adam, I love that. I love to get my ass kicked and it feels so good afterwards. But then they're also, but I can't seem to lose this last 15 pounds. I want to lose so bad. And it's, I, and I assess their diet. I assess their routine and what they're doing. I'm like, well, it's because you're doing the wrong thing for with the results that you're trying to achieve. So that's the one thing I would caution you is make sure that your your goals that you have align with what you're doing. Now, if you feel great, you like where your body fat percentage is, you like where your strength is at, and you enjoy doing burpees, or you enjoy doing HIT cardio, you enjoy Orange Theory classes, and that's now become part of then hell yes, do it. Keep doing it. But if you have goals that you're, you're trying to move your body, I want it to look a certain way, or I want to drop a certain amount of body fat percentage, or I want to add strength or build muscle. If you have specific goals like that, and you're stuck at a plateau, meanwhile, you're training this way, a lot of times that is the reason why you're stuck. Mm -hmm. You're stuck because your body is not, well, your body's responding exactly how it should be, but you're sending the wrong signal to it based off of what your goals are. And so you have to just, so if you're okay with where you're at physically and you like where your body is at, you like where your strength is at, and then you also enjoy doing, hell yeah, do the burpees, enjoy training hit stuff, that's that's totally fine. But where I have a problem with it as a coach, when I assess somebody that they, they tell me they have this goal, Adam, I wanna lose 15 to 20 pounds, or I wanna drop my body fat percentage by 5%, or I wanna add this much to my bench press and get stronger, and then they tell me this is how they're training. I go, well, yeah. you're you're sending a, com a competing signal to your body. You're 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 training it to be efficient at working out hard and really good at it. You're not training it to build muscle. You're not training it to lose body fat. Now you may think that way because you're sweating your ass off and it feels like you did a lot, but your body is getting adapted to that way of training, and it's not showing you the results you want. And this is where clients get stuck and they get and they get in a plateau. It's a psychological it. challenge. That's right. That's a very, That's my biggest problem yes. is the mental struggle that I want to do it, but that I don't know. Obviously, I was doing it not right before and too much of it. So I want to do it, but I also want to. I do have body goals that, and I want to lean out just a little bit. I build muscle very easily, yeah. and so I just want to lean out. But so I'm worried if I throw in one day a week that I'm mentally going to want to keep going more because I do like the feeling. I do like the feeling of accomplishment of challenging myself. You can of come being, back to it. I guess is the is um, the point. This is not something that you need to completely abandon. Um, but if you want to really dive into something that your body's going to have a new uh, response to and, and a new stimulus towards, like it, you got to ch challenge yourself to really psychologically place yourself and find the benefits of the other side of the training and focus on that. I mean, I go through this. We all go through this because I'm a creature of habit. I like a certain way of training. I like only doing one to five reps. I hate doing, you know, supersets and I hate doing bodybuilder style training. But you know what? There's periods where I want to just focus on challenging myself to respond differently and change my body. If you really want change, you know, that's just something that you have to consider. Well, also, Rachel, where are we at? Do you have any idea where you're at calorie wise? Do you, are you tracking anything nutritionally where you're approaching it? Do, you, do we know any of this? Yeah, so I was. Um, I started tracking November and December, and um, I was not in November. I, I was not eating enough. I was around like 1,400, 1,500 calories. So uh, when I started listening to y'all in October, I realized that error <laughs> of my eating was probably not right. So I started tracking, and then I started slowly pushing my protein up and my calories up, and I probably got to like 18, 1,900. Okay, okay. So this, so if you were, if if you were my client. And, and you, and you, you gave me the green light to truly coach you. And you said, Adam, I'll do whatever you tell me. I trust you. You seem like a smart guy. I'll follow whatever you're saying, even if I don't really want to do it right now, but I, I trust the process. I'd say, okay, Rachel, what I want to do with you right now is I want to purely focus on trying to build your metabolism. I want to build strength. I want to get a strong, healthy metabolism that's working for you. 
that you're, you get up to a place where maybe we're eating 23, 2400 calories and not putting any body fat on, that would be the desired outcome right now. And then I would say, once I get you there, then we can start incorporating your, your kickboxing and incorporating your burpees and incorporating some of these high intense things that you enjoy to do. And not only that, when you get to go back and do that, your body's going to respond the way you want it to respond based off the effort that you're putting forth. If you go and start to incorporate that stuff right now, when we're only about 1400 to 1600 calories, your body then is going to revolt. It's going to say, oh man, she's barely feeding me anything and she's beating the shit out of myself. It's going to conserve energy and it's not going to burn body fat like you want it to. So if we want, if we want to have our cake and eat it too, if we want to be able to train this way that you want, and you're going to be able to shred body fat and kind of get both the best of both worlds, then we first need to do, we need to do the things that we have to do now so we can do the things that we want to do later, which right now what you need to do is to build your metabolism is the strength so strength train something traditional like a three to four to three to four time a week full body routine i would actually follow anabolic right now based off what we know now and then maybe go into performance after that but i would i would follow that and the goal the mindset that i would want you to have is let's get stronger Let's get stronger and see if we can slowly increase our calories without doing all this crazy other high intensity stuff. And then, and, and we would set a goal together. I'd say, okay, let's agree that we're going to get you up to that 2,300 calorie mark without putting any body fat on. And then when we reach that, whether that takes us three months or eight months, depending on how consistent and how much your body responds, then we can start to play with the things that you really enjoy doing that are more intense based. That way you you can have your cake and eat it too. That way you can incorporate these high intense uh, training sessions with also losing body fat. Otherwise, if you introduce it to you right now, where you're probably still just barely recovering since it wasn't that long ago when you were training this way anyways, your body's not going to respond the way we want to. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So if I'm in phase three of anabolic, I know I've heard y'all say you can run it in a loop. Would y'all just start over? Yeah, actually, if you're doing it already, uh, I think Maps Performance would be fine, and I think you'll have a lot of fun with Maps Performance. I agree. So we'll, we'll okay, send we'll send over Maps here. Performance to you, okay, Rachel? Okay, thank you. Thank I you very much. Stay in touch with us. Let us know how it goes. Okay, thank you. All right, Rachel. Bye bye. Yeah, she's not being honest with herself. There's, <laughs> well, I mean, well, that's and, why I went. You know, that. you know what the challenge is here? The challenge with doing these calls is if this was a client of mine, mm -hmm. I wouldn't tell her right out the gates. You're not being honest with yourself. It's not going to work. It would be a long conversation over over right, right. sessions, you, you but lead look, her to that. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I mean, this kid. I know I'm gonna be a little harsh here, but here's a few things that she said. Uh, one, she's got a history of overtraining. Two, ooh, I love burpees; they're so awesome. But looking back, I was too much, and I probably shouldn't have done it. I'm not gonna do it again. Yeah. Three, I was eating 1,400 calories. What we're dealing with is a, an individual that is struggling with a little bit of an addiction to exercise, which is quite common, and she's not being quite honest with herself. She, she does she love it? No, she loves the addiction to it, um, and it's not working for her. And it's probably the last thing she needs to do for herself. And again, this is a, a longer process, and I know it's going to make her. You know, talking to her this way is just going to strengthen that and make her kind of defend herself. She's, but she, the truth is, it's it's she's it's all wrong. It's not good for. Well, and the then association her, of just moving that intensively is always about burning fat. Yeah, and I think that's where like you know I have the biggest issues because I had a lot of clients like this. Like I have to keep this though, and I love it because it's burning and, my fat while I'm also trying to build muscle. And, and I'm like, going to tell you this, and I know you guys have experienced this. Some of the hard hardest people to convince this of are women in groups of other women that do these challenges together. Yeah. That, and she meant, when she just, mentioned that, I was like, Oh shit, this is gonna be a tough one. Like, yeah, Oh, me and my girlfriend, my wife out of a group like, yeah, that. me and my girlfriend did this burpee challenge. You, you know, yeah, you like just talked about that not that long ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, she was in the cardio kickboxing and, the, and, and we were trying to get them to run maps program and they just turned it into a big cardio fest. And I'm like, you're out. Okay. You got to <laughs> yeah. do this on your own. <laughs> you're cut out. Yeah. It's, you cut it, out. Let them figure it, it out. It's really hard. They're part of a group. Everybody's suffering together. And, and what they, you know, they, there's definitely, value and working out together and that camaraderie but no she's well, lying to herself i mean i'm glad i'm glad you started from the the compassionate side first of hey if you love doing these things sure. like i'm never gonna, but i you know it, it, 
played out the way I thought it was going to play out, which is, you know, because it is at least 80 to 90 percent of my my clients that would make this claim that they love burpees, which that yeah. was rare. But, the, you know, the ones that would say this or love the hard circuit training, they 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 think they attach it to results. They actually right. think it's what's best for their body. And they also they're not receiving those. You, what else is common? We actually didn't get into it with her, but, you know, maybe she'll get a chance to listen to this and she can assess even further. But it's very common with my clients that are sleep deprived, low Low calorie, yes. high stress. It's all part of the same package. How because many times? How many times would you have someone come up to you, one of these clients, and they've got the dark circles? Yeah, they're weathered. They're sweaty from the workout they just, just came did, back from an injury, and they're like, oh, "But I feel so good." Well, so you have to explain why that is, right? Oh well, if, look, your your body starts to become a little resistant to some of these stress hormones yeah. because you're hammering your body with stress hormones. So this little extra boost of stress hormones that you get from stressing the shit out of your body. Starts to make you feel good. And then you got to throw caffeine on it. And then you got to do more of this intense stuff. And then the fear is if I stop beating myself up, oh my God, I'm going to gain all this body fat. Mm -hmm. It's a very tough position to be in. And you will lie to yourself. And that's exactly what she's doing. I mean, when she says, I love it, it's so great. But looking back, it wasn't good for me and I shouldn't do it. Huh? Which I want to, again, it, and we said this, but I just want to reiterate it's if she was at a place where she was happy. She was not trying to get stronger. She wasn't trying to lose body fat. She just yeah. she is she did it for sure. the enjoyment of it. Yeah, she's not trying to change. Like she's not trying to change anything. Yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Then keep doing it. Yeah. I got nothing wrong with that. And you know, eating sixteen hundred or so calories, not a bad place. Could be better, but not a bad place. Yeah. And doing what you love, having the body you want, having the strength and energy you want. Mm -hmm. That there, I have nothing. I'm nothing against anybody doing marathons with doing burpees with doing high intense stuff. Yeah. So long as they they love everything about it. But what always happens is I get someone who tells me I love all these intense, crazy things, but then I also want my body to change, yeah. and I can't figure out why it's not. Well, let me tell you why it's not. It's because, you, like you said, you're stressing the shit out of your body, and the feeling you get that you think is that you, this accomplishment, if that's cortisol spiking. It mm -hmm. gives you this uh, this little high. It keeps you going. And it feels, really, it feels really good, but it's not what the body needs to see the change that you want. And so... You're in this, you know, weird predicament of I know that stuff makes me feel good when I when I do it, but I also realize yeah. now it's not what's best for my body. And the first program, didn't she say the first program that she hit. did was Matt? Of course, hit. Yeah, of course she did. That's why we didn't. Yeah. That's why we we waited yeah. so long, and it comes with a warning. You know, I hate to say that as it sounds arrogant, but you know, when you train people for decades, you start to see common There's commonalities, yeah. and she, and this is a very common avatar and persona of a client that would do well and say exactly what she said 85 to 90 percent of my clientele yeah I, I will say this though and and it um it does make me feel good because here we here we knew what we waited to put hit out for a long time because we were afraid that it would do nothing but attract the wrong people yeah the wrong yeah. people are going to want to do but that what is around. great is that look here we are having a conversation with her That's so right. it mm -hmm. it got her in because she saw, oh, this is the way I like to train. Mm -hmm. And then she's listened to the show and she started to piece together, maybe this is not what's best. Yeah. And now here we are on a phone call. And so hopefully we can set her on the right track. But I tell you what, if you're listening right now and MAPS hit, was the thing that attracted you to it. If it was the first program you bought of ours, you might want to question <laughs> if you're in the same boat because We're going to have a hard conversation with that's you. That's right. Like it's, it's, a, it's very common. She's way more common than she probably thinks she is. A yeah. lot of people. And, and this we, is why her mindset team. is shifting, so there's progress there. So right. we can highlight that, and hopefully yeah, she, she goes yeah. through the program. And if people only knew how at odds we were with our marketing uh, team sometimes, because we tell uh, people not yeah. to do <laughs> these popular programs that we could sell the shit out of if we just totally. lied a little bit yep hey if you enjoyed that clip you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe